Samantha Ray's heels echoed on the polished marble as she strode into the opulent lobby of Ray Industries, steeling herself for the confrontation to come. It had been ten years since she'd stepped foot in her father's domain, a gleaming tower of glass and steel that loomed over the city like a monument to his hubris. But this was no homecoming. She was here for answers, answers to the string of grisly murders that had rocked the city, leaving her team of detectives chasing shadows. Answers her estranged father might hold the key to, as much as it twisted her gut to consider. The receptionist's eyes widened as Samantha approached, recognition sparking. Ms. Ray, we weren't expecting. I need to see my father, Samantha cut in brusquely. Is he in? Yes, but he's in a meeting. Samantha was already moving past her, stabbing the elevator button for the top floor. The mirrored door slid shut, and she let out a shaky exhale, confronted with her own reflection. Piercing green eyes in a face of sharp angles, framed by feathery raven hair, features so like her father's, a taunting reminder of the heritage she'd tried to escape. The doors pinged open, depositing her in an echoing stone foyer. At the massive oak desk sat her father's longtime assistant, an expertly coiffed woman with a pinched expression. She rose as Samantha approached. Sam, she greeted in a clipped tone. This is a surprise. I need to see him, Claudia. Samantha fought to keep her voice steady. It's urgent. Claudia's gaze flicked to the heavy mahogany doors. He's not to be disturbed. Samantha was already shouldering past her, ignoring the squawk of protest. She threw open the doors to see her father standing by the wall of windows, hands clasped behind his back. The severe cut of his charcoal suit did little to hide the bulk of his frame, still imposing after all these years. Hello, Dad, she said, hating the quaver in her voice. We need to talk. Alistair Ray turned slowly, cold gray eyes raking over her. Samantha dot in. To what do I owe the pleasure? His voice dripped with irony. She swallowed hard. The murders. The ones all over the news. The victims. They all have ties to you. To Ray Industries. Something flickered in his gaze before the mask of cool indifference slammed down again. I have thousands of employees and hundreds of enemies. You'll have to be more specific. Jeff McAllister, head of cybersecurity. Deborah Whitaker, CFO, Dada Dahl. And Carla Vaughn, she hesitated. Bile rising in her throat, your mistress. Alistair stiffened, a crack in the facade. Careful, girl, he warned softly. You're treading on dangerous ground. They're all dead. Samantha pressed on, taking a step forward. Murdered. And I think you know why. I don't like what you're implying. His eyes hardened to flint. If you've come to accuse your own father of murder, perhaps you should take a look at your so-called detective skills. Anger flared hot in her chest. I'm trying to find the truth. Something you never seem to care much about. He scoffed. The truth? You wouldn't know the truth if it smacked you in the face. Too busy running away from your problems. From your family. Can you blame me? She shot back, hot tears pricking her eyes. After what this family put me through? What you put me through? You made it clear you wanted perfection, not a daughter. Nothing I did was ever good enough. For a moment, something like regret shadowed his face. But it was gone in a blink, replaced by a sneer. If you're quite finished hurling childish accusations, I have a company to run. Feel free to see yourself out. Whirling on his heel, he strode to the bar cart in the corner and poured himself a scotch. A dismissal, cold and brittle as the ice cubes clinking in the cut crystal glass. Vision blurring with furious tears, Samantha turned to leave and froze. There... On the wall, amid the framed accolades and newspaper clippings, was a familiar face. Carla Vaughn, on Alistair's arm at some gala, her smile brittle. And behind them, hovering on the edge of the crowd, another figure. One that made her heart seize painfully in her chest, a phantom touch brushing her cheek. Nick. Dot. What? Her Nick, the boy who'd held her the night she finally worked up the courage to run from her father's gilded cage. The boy who'd promised to love her forever, 
right before he shattered her heart. Now a man grown, his once boyish face chiseled with shadows and secrets. A man who, she suddenly realized with sickening clarity, might hold the key to unraveling this twisted web of death. Pulse pounding, she fled her father's office, plans already churning. She had to find Nick before the killer did, before her father's sins eclipsed them all in blood and darkness. But in her haste, she failed to see the calculating gleam in Alistair's eyes as he watched her go, a smile playing at the corners of his mouth. A smile that said the game at long last was afoot. Samantha's mind raced as she navigated the crowded city streets, dodging pedestrians and ignoring the honking of impatient cabbies. She hadn't seen Nick in eight years, not since that fateful night when she'd laid her heart bare, only to have him crush it beneath the heel of his ambition. He'd chosen his journalism career over her, over the love they'd whispered to each other, in the secrecy of tangled sheets and stolen glances. The betrayal had cut deeper than any knife, leaving a scar on her soul that had never fully healed. But now, with innocent blood spilled and a killer still lurking in the shadows, Samantha had no choice but to confront the past. Nick's past, intertwined with her own in ways she was only beginning to fathom. Heart in her throat, she mounted the steps of the Chronicle's headquarter building, memories assaulting her with every step. Stolen kisses under the old oak tree in the quad, heated arguments over half-written articles, whispered promises in the dark. Get it together, she muttered, giving herself a mental shake. There was no room for sentiment in murder, a lesson she'd learned long ago. The bullpen was a hive of activity, reporters and editors shouting over the clacking of keyboards and ringing phones. Stealing herself, Samantha wove through the chaos to the glass-walled office in the corner. The placard on the door read, Nick Hamilton, Senior Investigative Reporter. Her fist hovered over the door, poised to knock. Through the glass, she could see the back of Nick's head, bent over his desk. The sight made her ache in places she'd long thought numb. Suddenly, he swiveled in his chair as if sensing her presence. Their eyes locked, and the breath left her lungs in a rush. God, how was it possible he was even more handsome than she remembered? Gone was the boyish softness, replaced by sharp angles and a gaze that seemed to strip her soul bare. Then he was on his feet, closing the distance in two swift strides and throwing open the door. Sam, he breathed, stunned. What are you doing here? She swallowed hard. I need your help. The words felt like broken glass in her throat. There's been a string of murders all connected to my father. I think you might know something. Something shuddered in his expression, but he stepped back, gesturing her inside. She brushed past him, hyper-aware of his nearness, the heat of his body. Focus, she scolded herself firmly. What do you want to know? He perched on the edge of his desk, arms folded. Defensive. Guarded. Samantha mirrored his pose, holding herself stiff and unyielding. Carla Vaughn was one of the victims. I saw a photo of you at the same event. Did you know her? Pain rippled across Nick's face. Not well, he said carefully. But I'd been looking into her before she died. Samantha's gut clenched. Looking into her how? He pushed to his feet, pacing to the window. The set of his shoulders radiated tension, regret. She came to me, about a month ago. Said she had information on your father. Something big. She was scared, Sam. The scar over Samantha's heart throbbed. A dull and distant pain. What kind of information? He shook his head. She wouldn't say. Wanted me to meet her, someplace private, to hand over a flash drive. But the night we were supposed to meet. His voice cracked. She never showed. I found out the next day she'd been murdered. Samantha pressed a hand to her mouth, mind reeling. What secrets had Carla died for? How deep did her father's crimes run? Before she could voice the questions, Nick turned back to face her, eyes blazing with a determined fire she'd once fallen headlong into. I promised myself I'd find out what happened to her. Expose the truth, whatever the cost. His gaze bored into hers, achingly familiar, yet alien all at once. And if your father is behind this, then I promise you, Sam, 
I'll make him pay. Even if it means dredging up the past. Promises. He'd made her so many, a lifetime ago. But the bitter truth lodged in her throat. Words were pretty and easy. Following through was what mattered. I'm coming with you, she said abruptly. Surprise flickered over Nick's face. What? Sam, no. It's too dangerous. I wasn't asking. Pushing off the desk, she stepped into his space, lifting her chin in defiance. The move brought them nose to nose, breaths mingling. This is my case, Nick. And if it's going to bring me face to face with my father's sins, then I damn well need to be the one to uncover them. Nick held her gaze, searching. For endless seconds, the air hummed between them, the gravity of all they'd lost, and all that was still at stake. Then, slowly, he nodded. Okay. Together, then. He took her hand, fingertips rough with calluses and achingly familiar. An unspoken promise, this time perhaps one that would hold. One that would have to be enough to keep the looming shadows of the past from swallowing them both whole as they faced the darkest secrets of all. As they set off together, the weight of the case settled heavily on Samantha's shoulders. Little did she know, it was a burden that would test the very limits of her strength, her sanity, and her scarred stubborn heart, with the highest stakes imaginable on the line. The abandoned warehouse loomed before them, a hulking behemoth of rusted metal and shattered windows. Samantha's heart pounded a staccato beat against her ribs as she slid from Nick's car, the weight of her gun a cold comfort at the small of her back. Three days. That's how long they'd spent chasing leads, unraveling the tangled web of secrets Carla Vaughn had died for. Three days of tense silences and charged glances of brushing hands and stuttering heartbeats. Three days to come to terms with the fact that the trail of blood and betrayal led straight to the man she'd once called father. Nick rounded the car to join her, his jaw set in grim determination. In the dying light, his eyes were the color of a gathering storm. Are you sure you're ready for this? Samantha's throat tightened. Was she ready to face the monster who had haunted her nightmares, ready to stare into the abyss of his crimes? Ready to risk the tentative trust, the fragile second chance unfurling between her and the only man she'd ever loved? But Carla's face flashed before her eyes, the life snuffed out too soon. Jeff and Deborah, butchered for daring to uncover the truth. Innocence, all of them. Innocence whose blood now stained her father's hands. I have to be, she whispered. Together, they approached the rusted door, guns drawn. With a shared glance and a silent count of three, Nick kicked it in, the screech of metal on metal tearing through the eerie stillness. They moved as one, clearing corners and checking shadows, until they reached the cavernous heart of the warehouse. And there, standing boldly in a shaft of fading sunlight, was Alistair Ray. A cruel smile twisted his lips. Samantha. Dot dot. I was wondering when you'd find me. His eyes flicked dismissively to Nick. I see you brought a guest. Samantha's finger tightened on the trigger, ice flooding her veins. It's over, Dad. We know everything. About the embezzling, the offshore accounts. And the murders. Alistair clucked his tongue. Murder is such an ugly word. I prefer to think of it as tying up loose ends. Loose ends? Nick snarled. Innocent people are dead. Necessary sacrifices. Alistair spread his hands, a grotesque pantomime of reasonableness. They were sticking their noses where they didn't belong. Threatening everything I've built. Everything I've done for this family. For this family. A hysterical laugh bubbled up Samantha's throat. You destroyed this family. Drove mom to an early grave. Made my childhood a living hell. And for what? Money? Power. Ungrateful child, he hissed. I gave you everything. You gave me nothing. Hot tears seared her cheeks. Just a legacy of pain and lies. One that ends tonight? Alistair's eyes narrowed to slits. You really think you have what it takes to stop me? You're weak, Samantha. You always were. You're wrong. Nick stepped to her side, a solid wall of strength and certitude. 
She's the strongest person I know. Pride, fierce and bright, blazed in Samantha's chest. With Nick by her side, she could face anything. Even the demons of her past. Slowly, she lowered her gun. I'm not going to kill you, Dad. I'm not like you. You're going to prison, to rot for what you've done. Prison? Alistair tipped his head back and laughed, a bone-chilling sound. Oh, my dear. I'll never see the inside of a cell. It happened in a heartbeat. A blur of motion, a glint of steel. Alistair lunged, a knife appearing in his fist, as if conjured from thin air. One moment Nick was beside her. The next he was crying out in pain, clutching his side as crimson bloomed between his fingers. Nick! Samantha screamed, catching him as he crumpled. Laying him gently on the cold concrete, she whirled to face Alistair, unshed tears blurring her vision. You're even more pathetic than I thought, he sneered. Choosing this whelp over your own blood. He'll leave you, you know. Just like everyone else. Rage, white-hot and blinding, surged through Samantha's body. With a wordless cry, she flew at Alistair, years of pain and anger fueling each blow. They crashed to the ground in a tangle of limbs, grappling for control of the knife. Sam, Nick's voice, weak and thready with pain, cut through the roaring in her ears. A reminder, a tether, a lifeline back to herself. With a burst of desperate strength, she wrenched the knife from Alistair's grasp and struck him across the temple with the hilt. He went limp, out cold. Panting, Samantha staggered to her feet and kicked the knife away. Then she was stumbling to Nick's side, gathering him into her arms with a sob. Nick, stay with me. Please, stay with me. Oh, ah. His eyelids fluttered, a pained smile touching his lips. Not going anywhere. That time I kept my promises. The wail of sirens. The thunder of boots. The cavalry come at last. As the police swarmed the warehouse and the paramedics loaded Nick onto a stretcher, Samantha stood tall amidst the chaos, watching her father disappear into the back of a squad car. It was over. The secrets, the lies, the legacy of blood. She was free. Free to forge a new path, to build a life centered on truth and justice. And love. Nick's hand found hers as they wheeled him out, his grip weak but infinitely precious. A promise, a vow, a future worth fighting for. The road ahead would be long. There would be trials and scrutiny, old wounds reopened and scars laid bare. But with Nick by her side and the weight of the past finally lifted from her shoulders, Samantha knew they would weather any storm. For in the end, the love between them had proved the most powerful force of all, a love that could shatter lies defy monsters and build a legacy far greater than blood. A love, at long last, that would light the way home.